Good morning, everyone. I'm going to call the Marion Township Supervisors Workshop meeting for Saturday, May 21st, 2022 to order. The time is now 8.58 a.m. Uh, first item on our agenda is to do the Pledge of Allegiance. So everyone, please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. For anyone who is interested, there are masks and hand sanitizer available at the front of the room. Anyone wishing to address the board through public comment, please do so by signing in on the sheet up here and uh, clearly stating your name and address into the microphone prior to your comment. At this time, I'll open up the floor to public comments. Lee? Yes, I have a take out letter from uh, your zoning officer that we're not allowed to have animals and chickens. Uh, I don't know when you snuck this in. Mm -hmm. No, so, because hold on, so wait, so wait, this is actually something that we've seen the email chains going on and we want to talk about today because that's, that's a long standing that's been on the books for ages, but nobody's enforced it. And again, we haven't discussed it, but I think the, the perception here is all three of us agree it doesn't work. It doesn't fit for Marion Township. And we don't want to see that get enforced on you. We actually gave craft to the directive to back off of that for now until we get it changed. Because there's people like yourself, there's people like uh, Don, you're, you're one neighbor nearby. You have a chicken that comes and lives with you. We're an agricultural community. It doesn't make any so sense. Why, so, so why is it in? It's, 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 it's being taken it care of, but that. Section 403B, a minimum requirements for certain acres to keep animals. So that's something that is present on a joint zoning, zoning ordinance that's within um, all the three communities. So that's something that we're, we're going to uh, get taken care of. Yeah, we're, we're not going to have them enforce that fine on you. All right. of us, I think, were a bit surprised when we saw that because that's not one that we were familiar with. And we're like, this isn't right. If anything, like if you have animals like that, the only requirement should be that you, you know, properly secure them. You, you take good care of them and things like that. Because but I can show you pictures yeah. when my, when my kids were old. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We had animals. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm not right, saying right. you didn't. I right. Fought yeah. Right. For animals in this town because we had a big fight about that. Yeah. Right. And I'm going to fight it again. You, uh, Lee, so. Lee, so let me, let me make something abundantly clear because you're, you're coming at this combative. Yeah. We, we agree with you sure. that it's, it's something that's there. It's been on the books probably for a long time. pretty close to as long as I've been alive. Right. And it doesn't fit with us. So now that we've identified it, we're going to fix it. And we're telling them not to enforce that on you because we all agree you should not be made to give up your animals in an agricultural community. The only restrictions on that should be like, you don't have your, your goats running around on your neighbor's roof or something like that. You have to secure them. You have right. to take care of them. You have to be well, a good, good owner for the animals, but our goats are pretty well trained and you send pictures. Okay. This is on my property. He has Mr. never had a picture of him being off of it on off of my property. On his. Okay. And say so this is again and Lee. So if we have a complaint. We also have now have a problem with him. The other night he was out and he had a shotgun out and he was shooting at You should definitely call the cops when that happens, Lee. Like any anytime no. you say someone got a shotgun out and was shooting at something, immediately call the police. Well my wife was matter of fact this morning she wants the chicken to kill. Uh, oh, um, because of that headache that you cause. Well, so, no. so Lee, Lee, no. Lee, Lee. So, the your neighbor shooting at your chickens is not us. The only thing that would be us is that ordinance that, like I said, we agree with you. It's not right. It needs to be changed. We're right. we're not enforcing that on you. So, whatever bad blood you have with your neighbor with firearms, you need to sort out. You need to call the police if he does that again. We're going to work with you to make sure you don't have to give up your animals. The only thing that you might have to do is you may have to put up maybe some different fence, like a goat fence or something, so the chickens don't get through it. 
That's that's a reasonable accommodation. Would you right. agree? Right. Okay. So just to level set here, we're on your side on this one. Okay. If if your neighbor pulls out a gun again, call nine one one. Well, okay. he's allowed to have a gun on but, his property. But if he sh there's there's if rules about shooting, shooting within that's different. Yeah. So yeah. But you're allowed to walk around on your property with a well, gun. Are you allowed to brandish side. it at other people from your you're own not property? Allowed to threaten other people, yeah. but if I have a gun in my side, yeah. if I'm holding my gun and I'm not threatening yeah. anyone, my, I My point is that. there's a difference between right. sitting around with your shotgun right. and pointing at, at stuff on somebody exactly. else's property. Exactly. When that line is crossed, exactly. it's like, do the same thing I would do. Call the police. Exactly. Okay? And also... The other night, he did shoot when there was one not that far away from his property. Yeah, there's, there's rules about... Well, just tired of this. And you also... Up there, left the neighbor for the big parking lot right along these mailboxes. That was the drive. That's the driveway. That was permitted and legal. Yeah, and say so I, if, if it conforms to the legality of putting in a driveway and the impervious cover, there's nothing we can do about it. It's it's legal. Yeah, permit. Um, yes, yes, everything is permitted and legal. We checked into that because we had a couple of concerns about it. Everything is permitted along Ten Avenue. No, they're it's not. Everything is permitted and legal. We have the paperwork. Yeah, unless they're not parking on the driveway that they put in. If they're parking on the actual road surface, that's something different. Right, but if they different. are parking on the driveway matter. they installed, yeah, they were permitted. It's they were permitted. allowed to do Everything that. Everything has been permitted because we had some concerns, and that's been addressed. Everything is permitted. But then I get cited for parking along the edge of my road. Well, if you're parking on the edge of the road, that's in the right of way, Lee. That's not a driveway. Right. It's, it's the same thing. No, it's no, not it's because not. You, they had a permit to do that. You did not. If you want to get a permit to put in a driveway or something and it gets approved, then you absolutely can park there. Otherwise, you're still parking on the side of the road. The driveway the, is, is the, permitted. And so wherever they're allowed to park, they're allowed to park. If you think they're parked in the right Why? of way, then, then Camacho call, wanted to do the same thing. Why did call, you stop him? Call the police and have them come and investigate. That's all I can say. So why did you stop Camacho then? I'd have, I'd have to pull the permit and yeah. see why. There, there's other stuff, Lee. Like, I'm not a zoning officer. So when we send it right, over, it's time to get rid of the zoning officer, and I will be having that discussion shortly. Okay, that's fine, Lee. He is not doing this job. You're, you're welcome to that discussion. Because I can prove right now there's 35 places that have chickens. Yeah. In the town. Lee, Lee, again, you're getting high up. You're getting I high know. up on that. But here's your rule. I, I've read it, Lee. I know what the rule is. We know is. exactly. We know what section right the law yes. covers. So he was not right. doing his job for the time he's been hired. No, he's been doing his job it's, because he's complying with the law. Yeah. And so, so we realize that it's your your that's okay. Okay. Thank you for your comment, Lee. Okay. Do we have any other comments? Don, yes. On behalf of the uh, Marion Township Community Association, I want to thank the uh, supervisors for your uh, support and your monetary support. I want to thank you very much for what you've done for us. We appreciate it. And we're looking forward to having Thank you, Don. We're, we're very glad to have the MTCA in the community, and we look forward to working with you on that and any of the other things that you guys try to do throughout the year. And those signs looked great on the road, the big signs. Yeah, that, yeah. that was a really classy addition to that. So that was that's something to maybe consider for next year, too. Okay, do we have any other public comments? Oh. Oh. Yeah, and say I, I don't I don't think you need our permission unless you're putting it on like one of our pieces of property, but yeah, go go for it. It's temporary signage. Well, we'll put another sign up Okay. Yeah, if, if you need, like Kelly, you have my phone number. You can call me. Don, likewise, if you need something, call me and we'll We'll figure it out, but chances are, if you're placing signage like that, unless you need us to like put some money towards renting a sign or something, you you pretty much can do that on your own. Yeah. Okay. Before we move on, yeah, I want to introduce you both to Mr. Alsig, his fiance Nancy. They live at 13 
Apple Blossom. I've been discussing this this week. Mm. He was denied a permit to put up his shed because of the impervious restriction. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, we can discuss that today yep. and grant him a waiver so that he can put his shed up. Yeah. No one in that development's ever had a problem putting a shed up before. Yes. And I talked with Andy yesterday via text, and Andy said he thought they were going by the original ordinance mm -hmm. date. Well, that being the case, then there shouldn't have been a house built yeah. in there after they exceeded the 20,000 uh, 20, yeah. square feet. There. Yeah. So that ordinance definitely needs, needs resolved. It needs changed. It, it needs to be rewritten. But so. in the meantime, I'd like to get him authorization to put his shed up because he's waiting to do so. Yep. So I, I introduced myself when I came in. Thank you for the introduction for yes. the, the group, though. Um, I'm going to move them up to the front because I did actually have them on notes to discuss this. So okay. um, specifically with them, uh, I'll, I'll start from, I guess, the farthest to the easiest. Um, we need to redo the zoning ordinance around that so that we don't have this sort of thing in the future. Right. Um, it's my opinion, and Stone Cross in kind of an interesting situation because of being a... Uh, I'll say managed development in that sense. Like Tulpe View doesn't have the same thing. They're a development, but then they were turned off to individual homeowners. Right, but the lots are larger. But too. the lot, yeah, that, that was standing. Yeah. Um, the total lot size, I agree with you that if there was a restriction on impervious surface of let's say 20,000 square feet, um, that's something that uh, the zoning officer and the engineer should have been enforcing against as things got built. Otherwise the developer would then have to do the stormwater revisions. Um, with that said, let's say all, all the houses hypothetically went in and it didn't hit that criteria. That's something that our engineer, not the homeowner, should be keeping track of in terms of where that community hits that 20,000 square whatever limit. Um, and then beyond that, that number should be reversible into the individual lot sizes. So let's say you have a 5,000 square foot lot and you're allowed 1,000 foot of impervious surface you should not be able to exceed the lower requirement while exceeding the higher requirement. Like if everybody puts a shed on their property and does that, you shouldn't be at 25,000 out of 20,000. Otherwise that's, that's poor design in my opinion. Yeah. Um, so we, where there's going to be some things that we need to look at in terms of the ordinance to do that. But the, the immediate thing is um, we would be granting a stormwater waiver rather than an exception on this. Um, and that will remove the requirement for that that planning document. Um, we just changed the email from, from okay, exemption yeah. so, to waiver. Yeah, so, I assume that that's okay, Mr. Yeah, Mayor. so ultimately it achieves the same end result. Um, right. You wouldn't have to do that thing because everybody up here is, is a little confused by this and in agreement that it's it's silly that you should have to do a whole stormwater plan for putting a small shed on. <laughs> Exactly. Right, right. Exactly. Right. So, so, so let me let me break this down to more simplistic terms. So, the, the way I understood the whole problem. So, the information we were getting back was saying there's twenty thousand square feet of property total, and so that was being treated as a total rather than reverting it back yes. to the lot size. Yes. So, what you're proposing is saying now we have to examine each lot and have a minimum requirement for stormwater drainage. So, right. we, we do actually, right. because okay. of other, other areas that we have in zoning. So, okay. what, I'm, what I'm saying is like, if you, let's say you have 10, 10 properties, each one of them is allowed a thousand square feet of impervious surface. You, you know the math on that's very easy. Right. So, when you look at it as an aggregate, right. it shouldn't be less than that. Right. Right. And based so, on his property size, he has five, he has a 5,000 square yeah, foot right, limit. Yeah. Right. And I asked Andy about that yesterday when Andy came back with, well, the ordinance was approved in 2002. I said, aren't ordinances, don't ordinances change with the times? You probably saw we, the email. We have as, to do it. As, as time goes on until it's changed. Like if there's a law in the books that says, you know, you can't park your car here. It, no, does, it doesn't and get changed until later. And, and yeah. That, that's yeah. The, if somebody parks their car there 20 years later, it's still on the books. So exactly. It's, it's, realistically, they could be arrested. It, for that. It's the right. thing with the chickens right. all over again. It's it's a law that's been sitting right. on the books it's for the Sunday blue laws. No one enforces them typically. Right. Yeah. But I guess I understand we have a problem with flooding in this area. And just as much as my mm -hmm. community was built with certain concepts in mind and estimations on annual rain, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. That's what Stonecroft had in mind too. And so, you know, my only concern was, was, is it capable of handling any big rains? 
that's a question that we won't be able to yes, answer. Yeah. You know, yeah. it just it's just a hypothetical. So I understood a little bit the need for having the Oh no, I, I understand yeah, the need yeah. for the stormwater yeah. plan. I do, yeah. but I think the the onus is yeah. improperly placed on the homeowner right. Right. rather right. than on like in the case of the community, that right. should have been something that the right. the stone group was tasked with making sure that okay, each lot size, like I said, is allowed X amount of impervious right. surface. You need to make sure that your stormwater design meets if everybody, yep. worst case scenario did that maybe plus like 20 percent yep but okay so i'll well, the other thing that i brought up i'm sure you all read this stonecock is a private community yet yes. we make them obey some rules but not all rules if we're going to make them start obeying all the rules then let's move their snow let's take care of their garbage let's take care of their streets and let's take care of their people there's some legal stuff that we would have to look in, but we can certainly have that conversation with Andy. I know there's some some odd things in the original agreement in terms of like in, into perpetuity, but other than having to, to upscale a little bit and maybe get like another truck or something like that for snow removal to be able to handle that, um, it's not impossible, but it's it's a, it's an easier thing that's said than done, but yeah, we can certainly look at it. We should make them obey certain rules and not obey others. Well, they're, they're, and, they're and not, also, but they're not going to answer is taking care of either. all the runoff up there. That's why they have the, 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 big, the, the catch basin and everything, yeah. The, the basin that keeps filling up with water, but that's already been taken care of. This, this whole thing is so silly, that in my opinion. Uh, we've never stopped anybody. From putting a shed up. In fact, Kraft yes. came back right. and said they didn't really know why he was right. putting yeah. But it's a bump in the road that we didn't know was there. And we're going to so we came across it. And we approve a waiver today. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's the that's the easiest thing. I was starting right. from hardest yeah. to easiest. Okay. Is I'll, I'll motion to approve a uh, stormwater waiver for Mr. Allseg and his shed. I'll second that. Okay. Roll call. Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Motion approved. You I will get your waiver, sir. Very nice meeting you. Thank you for coming out. Yeah, so on Monday, we'll get Kraft. We'll call over to Kraft, or we'll have Sue, the secretary, call over to Kraft. Yep. So we can we can ask Kraft to get that kind of fast-tracked, if you will. Um, and then, depending on what they say, it may even be a situation where, like, you know the permit is approved and you can proceed. But we'll have either one of us or Jim or Sue give you a call and let you know how that stands, like, hopefully midday Monday. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's when there's a miscommunication, it's easy to get derailed, and it's easy to continue to 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 fight the argument you, you want instead of having a good back and forth conversation. And I hope this is what we're here for. We're not here to to we're here to have the discussion. We're here to resolve problems. And I apologize for that kind of a difficulty. But then again, you have some people that are willing to listen and willing to have an adult conversation. And then you have people that just don't. And yeah. so I apologize for any difficulties. And again, I thank you for your time and coming here as well. Yeah. yeah, thank you. If there's any further issues, the only request that I have as well, Sue, please call the office first. Sue will resolve most of your issues. And I think had that been done first, it probably would have been. <laughs> Uh, oh, she, okay. Well, she was surprised that that communications were sent to McCarthy yeah. because that's typically what she takes care of. And unfortunately, I think had it gone that route, I don't think any of this would have happened. I mean, so, it's, if yeah. McCarthy would have let us know, this has been going on for seven weeks. This goes right. back to my okay. discussion last right. month. Yeah. It's time for a new engineer. So, okay. Why well, okay. so, so burden them it, with, it, with it, something that no was, one else has right. ever had to deal with right. over what's obviously. It's it's a super mistake small. in our ordinance. Yeah, a right. twenty year old so, mistake. Right. So it's no just one, silly. No yeah. one knew about it, and here we are. And we're we're you well, know. I couldn't be because sorry. I live in Stonecroft. Jim's pissed off. That could be. So we're here. We're here to have the discussion, and we're here to have those kind of resolutions. We so have another discussion about replacing. Well, well, Jim, I've I've got. I, I've got some news then. So I forwarded an email out this morning, and I think Irene saw it i don't know if you saw it yet yep. um, mccarthy engineering sent me a letter uh stating that they will be uh resigning as the township engineer they're willing to serve until the end of the year until we find a replacement engineering firm but they will not be seeking reappointment at the 2023 so i guess the the homework for all of us is let's start calling engineering firms i know there's a couple in the area uh i've, I've dealt with bensinger stackhouse in the past i know there's a place in robinsonia 
that is a place in Myerstown. Um, we get uh, get flyers from I think it's Excella Engineering every year, and then Kraft does the engineering too. So we've got some choices. Let's essentially do a do a round of job interviews for who we'd like to be the next zoning officer and engineer. I'll find out who Ivan Park hired after he's fired. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Have a good week. Okay, uh, seeing no other public comments at this time, we'll move into the main items for agenda. Uh, first item is the Stonecroft Village sidewalk and curbing. Uh, the sidewalk and curbing has been installed at the removed construction entrance. Uh, curbing repairs and replacement continue at the development. Um, we're working on getting a meeting set up between the HOA, uh, one of the supervisors, the engineer, the attorney, and Landmark, which is still in the process of being scheduled. Um, Jim, I know there were some emails floating around on some availability for Fred and things like that, but um, if you can, because I talked to Andy, and Andy basically said, you tell us when to be there, and Jim, we'll be there. Jim Donaldini said next week was great, and Fred said the first week in June was great. So <laughs> between the, I sent an email back to both of them and said, can you guys get together and give us a couple of dates so that we can at least try to be there. Yeah. You guys have different schedules. And I'm yeah. available Friday. The, the important thing is we can't all be there at the same time. Yeah, Two yeah. of us can't even be there at the same time. Otherwise, it's technically a, a meeting. So um, if you want to be there, I probably won't be able to be there just for the record. But if you want to be there, make sure that you, you kind of rotate off if Irene's going to be there too. Yep. Um, that way I'd we're... Like, I'd like Irene to be there. So I'll, when I see her coming up... Just, just, just run, run away. Run away and hide. Like right, you, yeah. you tell me what time because yeah, I could be there Friday. Yeah. Okay. Just okay. Let me know before I go out and start running my errands. Okay. Okay. Next is the Berks County Conservation District Memorandum of Understanding. At the February 2022 Berks, or excuse me, uh, Board of Supervisor meeting, we motioned to sign this. Uh, we got the document on May 3rd with a note that says some of the language and responsibilities have changed. Uh, they included a summary of those changes. Uh, we would need to make a mother, another motion to uh, sign the updated uh, MOU. I have not read it yet, so I'm saying maybe move that to Thursday night. That's fine. Okay. Berks, the next item is the Berks County Association of Township Officials dues. Uh, this is $75 used to pay the expenses of the county convention. Uh, it's a clerical thing. I'll motion to approve the payment of the $75 to the Berks County Association of Town Township Officials. Second. Roll call. Peter? Aye. Irene? Aye. Jim? Aye. Motion carried. Okay, next, another housekeeping item is Marlin and Wilma Martin. Their letter of credit has auto increased from $51,384.71 to $56,523.18. Uh, next item on the agenda is the Main Street Traffic Study. Uh, this was performed for stop signs at Church in Maine, Water in Maine, and Sharp in Maine by Traffic Planning and Design. Uh, the report was received. Um, we have the engineer and the solicitor looking at it, and they will have some news for us on Thursday night about the, the actual takeaway for that report. Next is the culvert on Reichert Road. We received several quotes for the box culvert. Unfortunately, none of those uh, companies participate with CoStars. A motion was made at the April Board of Supervisors meeting to put the box culvert out to bid, along with the other culverts needed on Marion North and School Road. Um, those should be out there. I haven't heard on the, the, the bid opening dates so to speak, but uh, they should have been advertised by either McCarthy or um, Kozlov Stout. And we'll hopefully be getting those back and we can action on that in the next, hopefully 30 days. Yes. Yep. Every day. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's kind of getting nuts with how fast prices are increasing on things anymore. But we'll uh, we'll get the bids in and we'll we'll go from there. Also related to road projects and culverts, um, I'm making a list of the roads that will need oil and chip, crack sealing, cold patch, etc. Uh, we are waiting for the permits for the other culverts on Mary Drive and School Road, uh, and the culvert at Sheridan Road. Uh, we do have. Um, a little bit of news. I have to see what the dirt and gravel low volume grant 
came back at, but uh, the DCCD had offered to potentially fund that at 50% as long as we assured them that we would do the projects. We accepted that offer, but we haven't heard confirmation. Um, of similar note, the Berks County Cooperative- wait, 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 wait. I... Yeah, absolutely. Um, I was gonna bounce around, but go ahead. Um, so just to let you guys know, I actually reached out to the US Department of Transportation for um, any grants that might be available for rural roads. I haven't heard anything back yet, but it's a federal website. And I, I know you've perused the websites yeah. before. So we're going beyond state, we're going to federal to see if there's grants or funding. So I'm gonna just keep on sending emails. I'm gonna keep on just perusing the website. Um, and uh, I haven't seen Stu this week because of my work schedule, but I'm still working on getting an assistant uh, secretary to get someone to kind of like focus on like we need this looked into to see about funding because some of the roads are just so bad and unfortunately it's money mm. um down the road what might have to happen is we just might have to, might to, have to um, take out a loan and and get things done but the condition of so many of our roads are so poor because things are so neglected but we understand why because of cost and cost and cost so yeah. Um, you know, just to put it out there, it's something that I'm actively pursuing as far as finding funding for uh, road work throughout the whole community. And so I guess I need to go around with you and, and Butch and you need to show me roads. We need to get some kind of estimate of mileage over the most needed roads. Yeah. And um, so just go from there. I'm sure you're both getting phone calls about chair. Sheridan's horrible. Yeah, Sheridan's yes. bad. Sheridan, <laughs> yeah. the thing, the thing about Sheridan, Sheridan needs to be regraded. Right. Like it's it's pitched the wrong direction. Yeah. There's no base in the road, from what I understand. Yeah. So like the whole thing has to be a full depth. And yeah. like I said before, the going estimate on on this, and this is probably a couple of years stale. It's yeah. about five hundred thousand dollars yeah. per mile right. of of that. And There's that's, a whole budget. That, yeah, that's the whole budget Everything. for like two years. Your, yeah, your neighborhood. Yeah. My, now oh my god. Yeah. Yeah, uh, if you, have you driven down the dog oh, leg yeah. to work? In fact, I came down to, after the rain. Yeah. It's like yeah. a flood down there. Yeah. I thought, I thought it was a lake. I was going to take a picture of it. Yes. So I guess, School roads in the same boat. Yeah. So, so we, we have no shortage right. of things, but we have a, a limited supply of funds to do it. And I know you're looking into stuff. I've looked right. into a bunch of things. Like I, I know I talked to you about the, the multimodal thing. Yeah. But yeah, a lot the of the, is not gonna uh, yeah, what we need, yeah, you know? unfortunately, like yeah. I had sort of figured like, okay, maybe we'll put in some bike lanes because that does two feet of asphalt on either side. Fortunately, just about every road in the township doesn't have a line of sight yeah. requirements for safety to put a bike lane in, yeah. or even like one of those walking paths on the side. That's a similar sort of thing. Yeah. There's a lot of, a lot of the grants that are out there, unfortunately don't fit. And we, we'd have a really hard time getting them to fit yeah. in the township unless we can find something like right. that. And, and so this from what i've been looking at it, it, it it's vague but it's designed for rural roads yeah. so if i could ask if you guys yeah. have some yeah. idea on mileage so, so i don't this way when i have you know conversation say i've got 10 miles i've got 18 miles you know yeah i don't have it done yeah. but what i've been working on is going through on like google maps i'm dividing the township roads into six mm -hmm. areas and i'm getting road lengths for each road like okay. here's from school road to 422 or okay. whatever it's this amount of distance because that can then be used for uh the, the plan of doing uh, one quadrant of work like rechipping sealing whatever every year and we just rotate around and if there's an area that doesn't need a whole lot of love we can skip it and do something else or if there's an emergency there's always exceptions but uh breaking it into sixths for road work and then line painting would be we basically just take three out of those six and we just flip flop every year and we paint lines. Um, so it's, it's just time consuming to go through and go, okay, here's the start point. Here's the end point. Here's the distance, but I'm trying to catalog total distance, how much distance of outside white lines we have, how much distance of inside like double yellows or single yellows we have, what crosswalks we have so that every year it's not an exercise of figuring out, okay, what are we yeah. going to do? What's the distance? Yeah. What's the line painting cost? Yeah. It just becomes a, okay, 2023 is zone two for work and zone one, two, and three for painting. Right. Done. Right. And, and, and that's, again, that's, that's the good thing to do, I guess. So if I do get a response, I'm just going to give them a bull talk to and say, we need 10 miles of road. Yeah. Need, you know, yeah. full depth reclamation. Yeah, we're going to need FDR so, on a lot of it. Um, yeah. We should probably contact the federal representatives. Toomey's Toomey's on his way out, so maybe he'd like to help us. Uh, Probably not. And make make yeah. his 
make that one right. of his uh, but, but that's accomplishments. What, but that's what this particular, um, this is what this particular website is designed for. So even if it means funding and taking out loans, yeah. it's something that we have to seriously look into. Yeah. Um, and I know I mentioned at previous meetings that um, when it comes to liquid fuels, the amount has dropped because there's less drivers on the road. Yeah. There's a little bit of a bump up that I saw and the state probably will figure out how to continue um, to fund that source because it's it's what most townships, boroughs, mm -hmm. and cities depend on. So, um, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, they, yeah, and I'm liquid fuels, here. yeah. Yeah, and, and I, I, I guess I, maybe I should say, but I feel fairly confident that they're gonna continue to find a means to um, source that type of funding, whether it, it goes from quote unquote liquid fuels to um, renewable fuels. They're gonna just rename it. Yeah. Um, but because yeah. the state or something else, but because the state is so aware that that's how most towns and, and cities, et cetera, uh, fund their road projects. So I have confidence that that's gonna to continue to stay there. So based on let's say a minimum, let's say uh, we get 52,000 and change, we could say, okay, every year we can probably rely on $40,000. So if we know we have to take out a loan, that the forty thousand dollars will cover the cost of that loan. Yeah, but you know, it, well, it, the, it's such a, a balancing act because of all the other projects. That I, we I was have gonna going to say the one on. the one dangerous right. thing that we have right. to avoid is we want we don't want to take out right. a loan for yeah. something that's going to be forty thousand dollars a year to cover, right. and we only have forty thousand dollars in uh, yep. income on that because that means for the next twenty years or whatever right. we don't have any money to to do any road work. Right, um, and and so so it, it gets it gets so frustrating. That's why. I'm hoping to tap into grants. I'm hoping to get some assistance with this, but there's such a dire need for it. Yes. You want to reach out to Tumi, please go yeah. right ahead. I mean, I've got such a full plate. You want to write him a letter saying, hey, right. listen. Honestly, shotgun approach. Just yeah. send a letter to any of the yeah. state and federal. Yeah, let's send a letter to help. Yeah, if, yeah. if you have the time, I'd appreciate that kind of a help. So thank you for checking into the grants. That's yeah. good news. Yeah, I, I read stuff whenever I can on that. And like I said, there are some grants, like there was one that like the multi multimodal is an easy one that it covers anything that's mixed mode, like car and rail or car and pedestrian or car and bike. And I'm like, okay, this yeah. might be able to work. But when I looked at it more with the engineering people, they're like, you maybe could do it, but your roads aren't wide enough. And right. you have enough places where there's like turns and things that you can't guarantee right. safety on that. So it's, it's going to be one a hazard and two it's a lawsuit waiting to happen if somebody gets hit by a car right so, I, mean, I can't speak for any other boards what they did but i'm very cognizant of over what we do affects people down the road so just like you said mm -hmm. i don't want to commit anyone to a financial commitment that's going to negatively impact anyone from down the road yeah. so you know we have we're, we're being very careful with the decisions that we're making as far as not committing ourselves to anything that we know we can't afford. Yeah. We definitely don't want to over leverage. Not, oh, gosh, not to no. be cliche, but yeah. I don't I don't want to be that that board that saddles future generations, oh, like my kids or anybody right. else's no. kids with something no, that's like, all. man, I really wish they yeah. hadn't done that. That's just but did, uh, did you uh, that, uh, money that the ARP thing. Yeah. So I applied for the ARP money, but I haven't heard anything back. And yeah. I, I don't know if no news is good news or what, but I've literally heard nothing on that. So there's there was yeah. some this year and there's going to be some next year that we can also apply for. Okay. Um, and I believe there's going to be some available again next year at like the federal level that they're yeah. going to be putting stuff out with the like the, the infrastructure yeah. rebuilding act or whatever it is. So there are some other opportunities that aren't here yet. But we're going to look at them when they, they come out. But we're trying to see if there's things at the PA level or the county level or even the, the federal level that we can maybe leverage on that. Because a lot of the traditional ones that we've looked at, they just they don't they don't fit or we're not eligible for them. Or any of the ones that we can do, we typically do like BCCD. Yeah, those, 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 those don't need help. Those need to be taken out <laughs> and put back in is what they need. Um, oh, yeah. 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 Stouch, Stouchburg is one of the ones I'm going to recommend that we get crack sealed this year because that one, the, the shoulders are, are heaving because they made it wider at some point and we might we might be able to limp a little extra life out of that before it starts getting to the point where it's as bad as like school or shady cabin or any of the other roads that we were talking about. I 
yeah. 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 Let, you know, again, if we could collaborate, make a list of like our worst roads. So when I get a response and they say, hey, yeah. and we get to put together a grant package, um, of course, you're wonderful with the maps. Yeah. As much detail as we can provide, as much information we could provide to a grant writer, yeah. the less they're going to charge us for the information. If we basically written and done everything, all the work that we need to do, and they just make the words of sound nice for what the grant application is yeah we're, we're halfway there so yeah, yeah I'll, i'm gonna be working on yeah. that extensively over the next couple of days to get that done for the line painting component yeah. of it we have the lines from last year yep and i need to fill out some more for, for this year but we yeah. need to have that for thursday night because the deadline okay. is the first of june yep okay so, so that's the next yeah. item and that's that's what i was going to gonna jump ahead sure, again sure. and back into is um by doing all the measurements for the lines, we'll okay. also have all the measurements for the roads then too. Excellent. And then we can start getting it on, on the cycle that we've been talking as about. As far as you were talking about the grants, yeah. have you been successful in getting a grant writer? There's a couple of places I think that Jim had mentioned, um, BCIU has grant writers. All you have to do is Google it. The other good resource is actually going to the library. You can walk into the library because they, um, uh, I know in the past have worked with grant writers. So you could, um, I want to say, I think Sarah's the director now. I can't remember. Just walk up to the main desk and say, hey. Oh, no, 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 the Wolf Wolf Store, library. Oh, yeah, 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 just say, hey, um, uh, are you guys familiar with anyone that does grant writing locally? Because they've applied for grants in the past, too. You could probably also reach out to Penn State and any of the other local colleges. But Jim had mentioned that BCIU may have grant writers as well. So there's there's resources and you could also Google it. I mean, there's I well, like to work what, locally. Well, yeah, one of yeah. the things that may work yeah. if you're like MTCA is looking for a grant writer, one of the things that may work in your favor is you're technically a charity. Right. Like you're not even a not-for-profit or a municipal, you're right. actually a charity. There may be grant writing things available to you at either reduced or no cost. So yeah. the uh, best thing to do would just be look around. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, stop into the library. They they may be working with someone. If the ladies give you a blank stare. Um, just say, hey, you know, can you can you let can you ask the director? I'd like to speak to the, the director at some point. Yeah. And so there's been a change in in their board, so I'm not familiar with who's doing what, but I know in the past that they've worked with grant writers. Actually, one of their staff members was getting uh, certified in grant writing, but I believe she left her position if she went to go work somewhere else. So reach out to the library. The library has wonderful local resources. And if we happen to find a good grant writer, we'll have to be happy oh, to absolutely. share share that with the MTCA for sure. So, so we, the fee scanning cooperative purchasing the line painting. Yeah, I'm, okay. I'm working on getting that together for Thursday night okay. in, in its entirety. Um, because like I said, we have the list from last year that they, they didn't finish certain things that they need to do this year. Yep. Yep. Now I just need to get the the finalized list because like we have all the ones that they didn't do last year, but I want to I want to tack a bunch more on that. Um, so I think we we already covered I, okay. item number eight, so we'll move on to nine. Okay. Um, not until we tell them what they're they're painting. I'm gonna push on the guy to have it done like immediately because between you and I, I'm a little annoyed that they didn't finish the stuff last year. I, I know I know Kelly, like I can't I can't give you a date if I don't have a date though. There are so many delays on everything you know right right oh, i mean i could i could yeah. say paint everything kelly but i need to give them lengths yeah. so that we know cost and that's that's the thing i have to sit there and go okay like main street we could say yeah we want to paint main street but i need to know that main street is two thousand i have all of that but i want to do more that's that's yeah. the thing i don't want to give them the list of just last year because when we give them that list i can't add to it once we give them the list that's that's the, the difficulty we could have given them that list january 1st but i don't know if they would have accepted it, honestly but anyway we could have given them that list already but then we wouldn't be able to do any other line painting this year so it'll it'll be in for thursday night and then we're going to lean on it's uh bill coker i think is the guy that we typically talk to on trying to get that done as soon as possible because of the the shenanigans that happened last year because like I said, I'm, I'm not super thrilled that I took a day off of work, walked them around, and they did measurements for things and then never painted. We have a full file there. He said, you missed one year, two, a lot. Yeah. 
Right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I mean, it, it's a thing that happens, but we definitely want to avoid that this year because of what happened last year. Okay. Okay. If we if we have to turn you loose on it, we'll we'll let you know and appreciate the help, Kelly. But um, I have I have Butch now rather than me just trying to do all of that. So Butch can call every day and be be a pest uh, if need be for getting that done quickly. I don't. I know. I, I yep. you will. You will. You will have that on Thursday night, Butch. Okay. Next up is the office equipment. Uh, the monitors came in. Okay. Uh, I got the keyboards in. Um, we need to talk. Maybe not today, but we need to discuss the printer so that we get the right printer for over there. Um, and the computer. I actually did do some putting around. I found a very well specced out computer. Okay. It's three hundred and ninety five dollars okay. on Amazon. It's a, a Xeon processor, so it's a, it's an old uh, rendering okay. workstation. 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gigabyte solid state drive, okay. uh, workstation class video card and Windows okay. 10 on it. And um, can you I, add in a scanner? A scanner? So I don't know if we necessarily need something like that because the goal for the summer is to scan in all the old ordinances. Well, I meant for, we replace this thing to move that over there for, for you. That was yeah. that computer. So yeah. You, okay. So to, to because that computer won't link up with this scanner. So to have an independent scanner just for the other computer so that we could scan in the ordinances and get stuff done. So this way, all the ordinances can be scanned in. You can go to the website, click, there's the link, and you can find all the ordinances. So Okay, I'll do some homework on okay. finding a high-speed duplex document scanner. Yeah. I have an old laptop that I'm going to bring in. I was talking to Sue about this. I just have to find the power cord for oh, it. Yeah. I'll just essentially like uh, more or less donate the laptop to the township. Um, I'm going to connect with Peter Wallace. Uh, yeah. Sue talked to the other yeah. Peter and we're going to connect on that and see if we can't figure it out because after replacing the batteries, yeah. this is what I had said before. I don't think it's purely a charging issue. I think there's something else wrong. Yeah. And I don't know if we maybe had a failure on one of the control boards or it just needs to be like factory yeah. reset or so, what, but. So the control boards in there, it's right. the piece that goes up on the top. Yeah. Right. And what it's Peter was saying gone. on the phone was yeah. there's a program that was in the laptop yeah. that controls it. Yeah, so uh, that, we have yeah. we have the install file for the, yeah. the okay. program. That's that's easy, but my concern is like, let, let's go down the analogy of like, you have a computer with a monitor. Like at this point, we know the computer's turning on, nothing's coming up on that flip up thing, but we don't know if it's the flip up thing that's wrong or if it's something wrong yeah. with the, the main bit of it that it's well, not doing what it's supposed to do. It's not, no, it's, yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay. Oh, I mean, it's good to know, but I'm I'm really hoping that we can figure it out because, like I said, it might just be as something as simple as like the firmware needs to be reset or redone right. or factory reset, but. Um, I'm going to try to find some time with me and Peter Wallace that we can sit down with it and maybe poke at it and see if we can't get it working again. He's still technically road crews in here. Uh, I don't think so. But not this year. No, this I think, but year. I think he more or less offered the, yeah. the, the volunteerism of I'm happy to sit down with you and take a look sure, at it. Sure, so, sure. Um, I'll have to find a spot Thank that you. works with his work schedule and then whatever yeah. works for him, I'll just yeah. I'll take a half day at work or whatever. Yeah, I mean, then, it's very nice of him to, yeah. to, to speak with Sue on the phone and, uh, you know, kind of talk her through some of the other issues. Yeah. yeah. So all, all thanks for saying it because I know Peter does watch the, the YouTube videos. Yeah. Thank you, Peter. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, if you want to know more about that, yeah. yeah. I don't know if I told you, Pine Grove had one like ours and somebody stole it. Yeah, well, I went to it one night, hooked it up to their hitch, and drove off. And right, right, and 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 you, you, that's that's a problem. Yeah. And yeah. while well, on the subject of equipment, do we have a couple of projectors? Did you say? Yeah, we have two. Don had asked me about that to use for the movie. Night. Yeah, yeah, I, Don, you actually talked to me about that, and I said, like, let me know. I'll help you hook them up. We can either do one projector, or I. I... Sooner the better. Okay. We do have a company that wants to. 
Okay. Yeah, so that's what we would need to do is depending on how big you might have to buy a piece of like cloth or canvas or something to string up. Like I'm assuming you're going to do it out in the park. Um, we run an extension cord over, we set it up so that it's nice and level. And the, the nice thing about those, we got them cheap to begin with, but they're short throw projectors. So you don't have to have the back like 30 feet. You can have the back like five feet and it'll do it. And still do 100. And do a big, big, big screen. Oh, nice. Yes. So. Yeah, that'll be good. Um, and the other virtue is that we have two of them. So depending on how crazy we got, I might, I got to look and see if I still have it, but we might be able to do a, um, it's a an HDMI it's a splitter so that it's not mirrored. It's one big thing. If you have a widescreen mm -hmm. format film, we might be able to make that work big, but it, it's, it, well, yeah, but I mean, if we have to go that route, even just one projector, it'll get pretty big and still look nice. Sound we no, so that the projector is just that so we would want to bring over um like an amplifier and a couple of speakers i know i have speakers in my garage i could bring something over and set something up for you so like if you we've been watching richland not lately there yeah they've got a big wide area yeah so if this if this is going to be something that we're considering doing more frequently let's say the first one goes okay with us kind of shoestringing it together that might be something to consider buying some dedicated equipment because like i said i have a, a little amplifier and some speakers and, and things like that but exactly yeah. exactly give it a give it a trial run and then I, I would go so far as to say we'll be happy to let you use the projector anytime you need it or maybe a situation that if we at some point start using the projectors we'll buy another one so um i don't have any problems no, with that know. so just let me know when you want to look at that, I can yeah. I can drag the thing out. And I can show you what it does. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. if you if we have a couple of minutes after this, I'll actually bring it over. There's a lot of ambient light, which is why we ended up going with the TVs in this room. With the the windows so big and letting so much light in, it washes out projection. Yeah. But if you're at night in a park, it's it, it'll work perfectly fine. Yeah. So. Okay, so um, I'll make a motion, if you guys are okay with it, to authorize a spend of up to $500 for the replacement uh, workstation, the computer, for in here, so that we can move this one over to the, the new semi-office area for Irene. Wait, $500? Yeah. It's not for me, it's for the well, this is secretary. I know, I know, uh, I know. Treasurer. The treasurer and secretary. Yeah. The, the additional need for computer in that yeah. room. We want to repurpose this so. one and put something in here purpose so, for this. Can you second that? Yes, that's okay. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Motion carried. I'll double check to make sure there's not a better price on that, but that for sure. that that kind of hardware, that is a steal. So I'll, I'll probably end up picking that and up. And then you're just looking into printer and scanner. Yep, yeah, I'm going to be looking into the printer right. and scanner. And just keep in mind, the printer that we have in there is ideal because we can keep those, the two trays. Yeah, I'll look um, for something with two trays. Yeah, specifically. if it doesn't have two trays, as long as I get in, you know, yeah. I, I mean, it doesn't have to have two trays in it, just the second tray so I can keep the checks in it, yeah. it just slides in. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next is the proposed dog leash. Uh, I read through some of it. I didn't read through all of it. Okay. Um, I need to finish that. Uh, Jim, sure. I don't know if you read through Irene's draft for the dog leash. I read yeah. 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 So um, I, I cobbled together a bunch of different ordinances that I could find throughout the state, and I hope to make it pretty comprehensive. I guess if you guys um, say it's okay, we could send that over to Andy yeah. for final approval. Then if he doesn't find any deficiencies, then I try to be pretty comprehensive. Um, yeah, on, on top of that, I know there was a couple of text messages flying around. I'm okay with putting, because I actually wanted to do this years ago, putting up signs in the park about picking up after your dog. Yes. Um, or even getting the little litter post things with the, the bags, the, the trash can thing. Well, like, I'm, I'm not, brought up. Right, yeah. right. We, we discussed that at the NPCA right. meeting. I'm not. Banning pets from the playground. I guess that was once the case. No, because there was no ordinance. So you so have signs. To, right, you yeah. have yeah. Right, there were signs. You have to have an ordinance if you're going to ban because people can come back and sue you and say, it's well, not actually it's legal. not legal. So my only concern with supplying bags is that when people are going to take them and take them home, if we have a bin there, who is Who's going good? to collect them? And people are going to just overuse the privilege. So... Can what? Put a camera over there yeah. or something then? I mean, I, I, at right, that right. point, I think we're spending we're spending more money with a camera to yeah. secure some plastic bags. Like right. it's right. 
So as long as it's an ordinance and there's signage and people will understand that they have to curb their own dogs. And I even go so far as to suggest putting a couple of signs along Main Street as well to remind people you have to curb your dog. That's it. Um, a couple of interesting thing about the ordinances, some of the ordinances prohibited urination too. Well, if you're a dog, it's kind of hard to prevent, you know, the dog's gonna go, but certainly when, when they're defecating is something that could be controlled. And it, it, a part of the ordinance also applies to any animal that defecates on someone else's property. It's not just limited to dogs. So if you have any animal that defecates on someone else's property, you as an owner are responsible for, for cleaning that up. So um, the other part of it, it was like, um, so no defecation, no urination on public places, such as like the grounds of the township building, as well as um, the defecation would only apply to the parks. Because again, you, you can't really control these animals as far as being places. I mean, you gotta go, you gotta go. Okay. Yeah, but they can't say this, oh, it's time for me to urinate. Yeah. So, um, so, but I'm, I'm not so keen about supplying the bags for a trash bin, let the homeowner and for the dog owner or the person that has controlled the animal be responsible for that aspect of it. So, okay. so I'm hearing signs is kind of the, yeah. the winner. Yeah, Sign, signage yeah. definitely. Well, so, signage would be good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. most people anymore. Yeah. Don't care. Yeah, yeah. But I've, I've offered, I've actually gone outside my own house and said, oh, you didn't bring a bag with you. Here's the right, bag. right, right. <laughs> and so, so we may have to have signage throughout Stonecroft in my neighborhood, you know, up and down the main ship, but that might just cost us to let, well, to put people on notice. Not, not to yeah. park it back to yeah. Jim's original point is we can't actually put up signage in Stonecroft because they're, they're, oh, yeah, that's private, right. that's they're right. private roads. Yeah. So we could make the suggestion, yep. uh, but we wouldn't actually be able to just send Butch out and start slapping right. signs up. Right. So, so that's something we'd have to just notify. Right. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. 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 Yeah, you know, it's, it's keeping our community clean, keeping our, our, our community accessible for everyone, you know, let kids run around, not have to worry about stepping things, let adults walk around and enjoy the open spaces that we do have, so. Do you think that's acceptable, the MTCA, Don? Yeah. Okay. If nothing else, it's a step in the right direction. If we have yeah. to go further, we can talk about it at that time and see what we got to do. So then, um, with your permission, then, I will forward that to Andy, say, please review, give us feedback, we'd like to do this. Once it's passed, who's the president of the HOA? Jim. Okay. And so I'm not too sure if I have his email, but once once things like this are passed, I'm just going to start forwarding. Hey, Jim, we passed this ordinance to let you know you may want to consider getting some signage for your community. So we have to. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Next is the Western Berks Joint Zoning Ordinance, Section 403, uh, to keep your pets. Uh, we're, this is a change in process. It needs to be reviewed. This is actually the result of uh, Lee's situation that he brought up. Uh, we'll be looking at that, uh, and it would need to be reviewed by each municipal's uh, planning commission, then each board, and then the Joint Planning Commission advertised at a hearing and adopted for the change because of the joint nature of this. Um, in the time being, though, like I said, we have instructed Kraft not to move forward with the like the fines and penalties or anything with the enforcement of that until we resolve the the issue that we we feel we have here. So, just to reiterate that, uh, what we've had in public comment, we agree with you, Lee. It's not right. It doesn't match with the community, and we want to make sure that we get it aligned. But we don't want to see you have that happen to you until that gets straightened out. So, if you get another letter or anything, let us know. Call Sue. We'll look into it and we'll make sure that it's not actually progressing. Okay. Um, so I'm, uh, I apologize. I'm going to blow through the next couple of them. I just got a text message that my, my son is throwing up. So, okay. um, if you need to leave, no, 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 I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll finish it up. My wife's got I, it, but I, I, I can well. Yeah. We so, received an invoice yeah. from Cold Summit. I actually have to contact Andy. This was the project that was going to go on in uh, Mill Creek Township that got canceled. And so what was happening, we were getting some fees associated with us attending meetings, engineer attending meetings, et cetera. So I have to double check what this invoice pertains to. I haven't had an opportunity to get back into the office this week. And then it's gonna be a question I have to forward back to Andy saying, hey, um, 
what what's happening here? Do we pursue this? Do we not pursue this? So, what are those bills for? Wasn't that an outside entity that did the Langan Group? Study? So they were paying some of the fees associated with the planning, and then they decided to not pay this one. And I think it was billed for nine thousand dollars. And then there was the I think the traffic study is an, another bill that we received, not the one I already sent. So I have to review the bill, what it was for, and then submit it to Andy to say. Is there anything study, right? we, were, we were splitting with Walmart, right, right, right. yeah, and they were reimbursed that. So what's the bill? I have, for, I have to take a look bill? at it. We it's have a huge bill. Like I yeah. said the other day, I don't think that it paid it either. Right? No, 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 no. They were paying everything. They were paying everything. But once the deal was killed, they said we're not going to do this. This bill came in before the, the 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 deal was killed, so that's part of the equation here. So yeah, this was still when bills on, and because we didn't get paid, I submitted a second request. I'd like, to, I'd like yeah. to hear from Jim what the hell that was for. I could pull up the bill for you. Yeah. Right, yeah. So, so right, the, a large amount of money for a planning study that was being done by an outside. Yeah. Entity. So before we go too far down yeah. the rabbit hole, I I don't know the exact. I saw the bill amount, but not the bill right. itself. Um, yeah, that's what I, I saw. The amount. Yeah. It may be for something like we may be going completely off on a tangent here. It might be something completely unrelated to right. that. It could right. be like, oh, okay, that makes perfect sense. Or we may have a, a conversation on Thursday night with Jim McCarthy going, like, what is this? I looked at it. I really don't, don't understand it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. It may or may not be legitimate, it, it, but I don't know what it's for. Yeah, right. Exactly. Right. There's there's so many irons in the fire when it came to planes. There's so many conversations and discussions over the impact. And so I think. Everyone was covering every base when it came to looking at this project and the impact on Marion Township. And we would have been significantly impacted by the amount of truck traffic coming through, more likely than not, William Penn Boulevard and even yeah. bypassing 422. So, so that would have been a huge impact. I have to check to see because I think that prior bills for something else. Yeah. So, and this is when the deal was still on and not balls off. Yeah. So we'll follow up more on that. The next item is the Act 537. As we know, the SEO has been doing the inspection starting in the Northwest Districts. Um, I talked to one of, one of the consultants from Econ Partners, Joe Baldas, several times throughout the past week. Um, I sent him some material that he needed. Um, one of the concerns he had, whether it's McCarthy Engineering or the new engineering firm that we select, we need to get the numbers in the cost estimate uh, revised and i thought we had talked about getting mccarthy engineering to do that earlier in the year yes um we may even have that i gotta look but uh the original things that are actually in the plan are using 2013 numbers and uh joe's concern was uh, there's a couple of things that he just zeroed in on um that are way way lower than what it is actually these days like one of the things was a length of pvc pipe used for the, the low pressure side of the system it's thirty-five dollars a length of the plan. He's like, you you look that up on the market right now. It's one hundred and thirty-five dollars. So um, we need to get that revised because that's going to be a huge uh, deciding factor for grants and other funding, as well as just us going like, there's absolutely no way that you're going to be able to do this without severe amounts of help in terms of uh, a monetary thing. It's just not tenable from the cost standpoint. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll. I'll fish around and see if I have that in the email. I don't remember ever actually seeing it come across the mailbox, but it might've gotten sent into the office. I don't know. Uh, but if we don't have those figures, we need to have uh, some engineering firm do a recalculation so that we have 2022, 2023 numbers. Um, <clears throat> next on the agenda is the holding tank ordinance and agreement. Um, I've read through these again. The only thing that I think needs to be removed is that timeline in the agreement to connect the public sewer because that doesn't, fit for everybody like that's a, that's going to be only a small section of the township so other than getting rid of that i don't have any problems with it i would say we we turn it over to, to kozlov stout to get a, a draft copy for our review for actual adoption then we go from there okay okay um with that said that's the final item on the agenda we'll move into comments uh, we already covered uh, mr allseg's request for a stormwater waiver um, i have no further comments irene do you have any um, the only thing is, uh, I've been hearing some grumblings about people concerned about that we're moving to build a new building and spending all this money. I just want to clarify, there has been no movement to build a new building. What we are still on getting the numbers for is repair of this building. I haven't heard yet back from 
one of the contractors that we contacted. Um, I don't know about you with mobility issues, but what Peter and I are gonna do, we're gonna go upstairs and take the pictures so that when we do have the final numbers, we can go through everything here. Um, if people wanna take a look at the garage side of the building, the wall where they cut into to put the garage doors, the only thing that's supporting those garage doors is wood. So whoever made that decision made a poor decision from an engineering standpoint. And I'm concerned that with a heavy rain or a possible hurricane like we had in the past, because all that brick pointing has uh, deteriorating, it has and is deteriorating, there's a high amount of water that's getting in behind the wall. On the second story, those rooms are just trashed. Um, you can see where the wall is pulling away from the flooring. There's a huge amount of mold and mildew and that whole wall, we, we might be looking at something as a catastrophic failure. If that wall goes, yes. it's the integrity of the whole building and we won't even be able to come so, here use the office. Thankfully, yeah. like the one, yeah. the one, I'll say a couple of things yeah. on this. I think the damage on that wall that you're, yeah. you're seeing, we mitigated a couple of years ago in the terms of the roof. Like we're not actively getting right. to grade right. anymore right. because that was my concern. What I right. looked at is like, we don't do something about this. The, the building's going to fall right. over. Right. Um, something like a hurricane. Oh yeah. It, it's, it, it, some of the damage yeah. has already been done. Yeah. And we're done. when we're, when we're yeah. discussing anything about like this building or a new building, right. it, it becomes a dollars argument. Oh, is it yeah. going, is it going to be more yeah. cost effective to pump X amount of dollars into this building to right. make it fit for purpose and right. safe and right. well maintained or does it make sense to spend whatever amount exactly. whether it's less or more or the same right. to go into a new space right. that's so that's the purpose exactly, of that exactly. and we don't so, have right so when we have the discussion right right the, yeah right, the discussion is going to be about costs and how to approach those costs yeah. because the reality is that second story is useless to us yeah this office space does not meet our needs. The file room here does not meet our needs. And by me bumping over into this room to use as the treasurer and, and get some assistance between, between Dan as the assistant treasurer and an assistant secretary, it helps, but it still doesn't fix, it, fix the physicality of it. It's a problem right. shift. Not a exactly. Problem it's, it's not a problem solved. The other aspect is if we're truly to have this building open to the public, we need ADA access. Yep. We barely need the minimum barely. with the access that we have here. The bathrooms are atrocious. Um, and in order to accommodate true ADA access, uh, we'd either have to put in an elevator. We got a rough estimate of $300,000 or lifts, which I imagine would be about half that cost. And that doesn't even figure in architectural fees. So yeah. right off the bat. The other yeah. thing just to, to yeah. highlight that point of cost is anything that we're doing to this building right. is most likely going to be organic. We're right. going to have very little opportunities for grants. Whereas when we're looking at the right. new space, we would be able to specifically right. cut grants for things like it's an evacuation space. Exactly. It's exactly. Uh, emergency management space. Right. It's right. Uh, uh, rather than being a township building, it's a community center so that we have space for like the MTCA right. to do like bingo and, and stuff exactly. like that. Exactly, and, and those are some of the points that, that, that I was going to get at. <clears throat> we even have an essence to repave the parking lot because this parking lot is awful. 17500 to repave the parking lot. I thought, correctly. I thought it was more than that. Uh, I, don't, you know, I, I, I thought it was closer to like 40. Oh, I don't, I don't I, remember. I'd have to look at the email, yeah. but I thought it was more than that. It, it could have been. I, you know, I don't know. Windows, all, all these things. Again, it's not cosmetic, but that's exactly my point. We're, we're going to have the numbers and then we're going to move forward from there. We're going to look at grants based on our income study, which is a nice feature of, of getting this done for the Act 537. We may be eligible for grants that could pay up to 70% of a new building. Um, there are other items to look at that I just came across as an environmental hub. There may be grants that allow us to have solar panels on that building and other green technologies so that in the event of a power failure, there's always a backup system to power the building where it can be used as an evacuation center. And those are huge points that now there's, there, there may be funding and grants available for. So again, having said this earlier in, in the conversation, I will not commit myself, my children, or anyone else in this community to any type of a financial scheme that will create a huge amount of debt. We are looking to do things to the best of our abilities to find opportunities for financing that minimize the impact to anyone living in this community. And we are trying to focus on doing something that creates a community center, not just a township building. We like to find a community center 
So all the things that are in the history room, we would love to see displayed along the walls in the hallway of a building. Or, or have it in such or, a way that yeah. they're separate rooms, right. but you can actually access them right. other than twice Exactly. A year. Have a room so that the Mary Township Community Association can use for movie night. They could use for bingo. It could be used for other events because there's nothing in our community for large events. There's nothing down the road for large events. There's no facility that I would like to rent to have friends and family over for a large um, gathering. And so having that available within the community is very important to me. In addition to that, it's also moving the park and having ADA compliance with the park. And again, having it as a beautiful feature so that everyone can use. I was driving into Manhattan the other day and I was like noticing some communities do um, music in the park. They have all kinds of things that go on all year round, which have access to their community building and community park. And that's something I would love to see Marion Township grow with. This is not going to be an overnight process. It's going to take some work, but these are the things that I've been working towards and trying to find funding as well as trying to get the, the real time estimates for what it is to, to fix this building. Unfortunately, this building has been so neglected. I, I, my biggest concern is going to be a money pit, you know, and that to me, and the sad part is it, it just, it, it doesn't function for township purposes anymore. We're, we're hobbling along with it. It's, it's really, it's failed. Yeah. We, we've tried to fit the space and I think yeah. it's, it's probably time that we think about making sure our space fits us. I've, I've said this before, the garage is a prime example. They, they retrofitted old classrooms and jammed a couple of trucks in it. It works for parking the trucks, but you don't have a space right. really to maintain the trucks right. or work on the trucks or clean the trucks. Um, but it all comes down, like I said before, cost. If, right. if we can do this in a way that if we're, we're spending, right. let's say, $200,000 alongside all the grants to get a right. new space and a new park and everything, or we could be spending right. $50,000 every year on maintenance on this building for the next 20 years. Yeah. That's that's simple. Okay. The math on that is painfully oh, simple. And just one more thing to add to it. I checked with the National Service for Historical Buildings. This building meets no criteria. So I've heard that argument to us out again and again. This building meets no yeah, single it's, criteria. It's historically relevant, right. but not historic. It's not, it does not fit any criteria for historical building. I will double check with the Berks County Society. Problem is there have been modifications made to the building which more likely than not destroys any elements of historical significance. And only if things would be restored to its original um, status, that would probably be the only thing that yeah, would that bring be, it back in. That would but be that would astronomically be so absorbent expensive. costly. It is way out of our budget. Yeah. yeah. With that said, I don't want to yeah. see the, the building yeah. get knocked out or anything like that. Right. But. There, uh, I could show you the stuff that I've been looking at. Um, because now, like, I came across the concept of an environmental hub. That's a whole thing I have to start exploring because with climate change and communities like power failures, when we're talking about summertime, yeah. not necessarily winter, power failures, major cities have these cooling centers. Mm -hmm. We could be, quote unquote, a cooling center, but it would also, the building would have to be designed in a certain way to maximize efficiency and minimize power usage. Yeah. Um, there's green technologies to get uh, like solar panels and stuff like that. There's different applications when it comes to municipality and government services. We would have to have a backup generator so that in the middle of winter, if it's snowing, you know, bad weather, cloudy, etc., we would have to have something so that if there's loss of power and people are without heat, we have that facility. We have to have a functioning kitchen. We have to have adequate bathrooms. And honestly, something as simple as having a hazmat shower for the guys they come across a chemical, they don't have any place to go. Or like an eye wash. Yeah, we need an eye wash station. We don't even have an eye wash station. So, you know, there, there's certain things that we have, my personal experiences as OSHA safety type yeah. of a thing to, to function with. And there's there's so many things that are lacking here that I think people got very, very much tunnel vision. It's about the meetings and coming to the facility for the meetings. Well, it's more than that. It, it's, it's having as a functioning township. Our, Population grew, not by much, but it grew since the last census. And we will more likely than not continue to grow or hopefully continue to grow. And we need to meet the needs of the community. We also need to meet the needs of the safety of our employees. We need to meet the needs of what our office staff needs because this office well, currently is expanding. We may have more staff down the road. Just to make a simple yeah. point, it's like the ordinances. You have to update every once right. in a while. You can't have something that's been frozen for 20, 30 years and expect it to still be contemporary. Right. 
and even building into like an extra space. I know there have been police in Marion Township before. If there's a large enough uh, growth for it, would police move back into an office that could be provided? Um, we've already had a couple emergencies. There's no space for the emergency management coordinator to work out of. And that's something that um, I know John's been talking to other people within um, the other regions about, and, and you had mentioned it even about getting us whiteboards. These are, these are simple things that could be provided. Um, John was able to secure some uh, items when it comes to emergency management, where to put those. Yep. Currently the stuff's in the closet in the other room. So, so there's so many things that are evolving that in order to keep up with the times, we need to do so too. It's not just about coming to the meetings, sharing information, the budget, the roads. There's so much more that this township does that I think people at large in the community don't realize. But it's also, I feel, I would like to provide Yep. more accessibility for the community to use it as a community center to have that resource so yep, i agree with you yeah so we're not going to be blowing all the money that marion township has we are looking into funding we are not going to commit ourselves to anything without securing some type of grants funding to minimize the cost to marion township yeah bottom line is like the yeah. roads if we can't afford it we won't we can't do, we, it. We can't do it so we're, we're just assessing options really at this point um, I need someone to help me with it. <laughs> I do. Any any other comments, Harry? No, I'm okay. done. That was a lot. Jim, Sorry. do you have any comments? Butch, do we have stop signs? We should. The one down, the one down behind Daryl's is completely Where? Down, down behind the old Daryl's restaurant. You can't even see that. Uh, at the barn, church, church and main. That one's completely destroyed. Okay. You can't even see it. Yeah, and, and a lot of these, I don't know about putting stop signs on the alleys, but is it is there an issue with uh, with any of these? This through alley, yeah, that goes through. The, uh, that's where that stop signs at. By the way, I'm trying to remember. Are there the any issues with them coming? There's no stop signs on any. Of them. Yeah, there's I, no I'd stop have, signs going this way. I'd have to check with both. Yeah, <laughs> it will be, common sense isn't common, unfortunately. But I'd have to check the rule on that. I think the rule is if it's a, a low volume feeder road onto a main road that you can place stop signs there. But I'd have to double check with Andy. If we can, it would just be a, we could draft an I ordinance. Know, I don't know if it's a major issue, but I did notice that there was none. Well, I, I grew up in a place where there were stop signs on like every corner, so I'm, yeah, I'm used to so seeing did, uh, that. So, yeah, so did I. Yeah. And also, uh, I've been told that there was. The amount of money years ago given by a local resident to do some drainage, I think that's Marion. Oh, you're talking about the uh, the pipe sits. the pipe over there. Part of what Mad get dental when they put that in, they had to, I think it was like a thousand or two thousand dollars. They contributed towards uh, whatever that project gets done doing that. It's still sitting there, but it's it's obviously going to be a lot more than two thousand dollars to do so the pipe. The the pipe that goes from 422 along Marion. To Main Street from the down stormwater to the, down to the storm down sewer. To the storm sewer. Okay. Um, that at some point needs to be redone because oh, it's great. technically speaking, it's it, most times it works, but it's a little undersized yeah. and yeah. it needs to be replaced. Um, there's water laying there. And yeah. There's, well, and then too, where it goes in, there's two big ditches on both sides of the sewer. Yeah. So the, main the complicating thing with that is because it's two sections of that system, it's not just as easy as tossing like a new pipe in. Yeah. There's uh, this, I had this conversation with Al. It's not like we just go and okay. grade whatever. Yeah, sure yes. Um, okay. We need to have some stuff looked at, really looked at from a design standpoint, because if we put a pipe in, we might do the exact opposite and have it pull up to the opposite side because it's uphill to get to the, the pipe. Um, so we need to make sure that that's done. So it's actually moving water correctly and we're not flooding out people's backyards, but that's something that has been on the, the rolls for a couple of years now, but it has been overshadowed by some of the other things like the culverts. Cause if we're going to spend, we have to spend on the things that are, you know, well, I actually just failed. What, was, what the story was, I heard that yes, somebody had donated yeah. money. Yeah, there was, it was and one. The other, the other, only other one I have in my list is the, uh, I noticed that John Sowers is still in the garage. I drove okay. by there the other day. The generator's running. There's more junk out there than ever. Walk and on. I thought he was evicted. They were trying to evict him. I know that. Let me let me call Crafts on Monday and see where they stand with that. Because it's a mess. It, you yeah. drive by it right now, you'd be stuck. And I'm assuming the police are aware of it at this point. I'll reach out to. And there's uh, a few junk cars too. If you drive down the alleys. Yeah. 
There's yeah. one down here, there's one down here, there's one down here with no wheels on it. Uh, okay. I, I guess they have plates on it, but I can't imagine the current. If you don't have any wheels in your car, you're not going right. to. Yeah, I mean, just to, just to be devil's advocate here, if it's registered and inspected, yeah. but it doesn't have wheels on it, I mean, there's, there's not much, but the likelihood is low. Yeah. But I'll, uh, I'll reach out to Craft Codes about the whole garage situation, and I'll reach out to Talpa Hawken and see if they're aware. I know from a police standpoint, their their hands are kind of tied because I talked about that with them yeah. that like until he starts doing something legal right. he's not actually right. doing anything illegal it becomes a, a codes matter with craft for like you're occupying a space that you shouldn't be occupying if yeah. he's actually living there or he's doing something unsafe or um, yeah it's it's difficult to say but I'll I'll review that because I know that was in flight more than a month ago but I know uh, eviction law works weird in PA yeah, yeah I know it takes so, forever yeah been there done that many years but yeah. Okay, so with Sue not being here, once again, our condolences to Sue for the, the loss of, of a family member. Uh, I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. The time is now 1014 a.m. Second. Okay, Jim seconded. Roll call. Peter? Aye. Irene? Aye. Jim? Aye. Okay, motion carried. Meeting adjourned. Thank you, everyone. I need you guys to sign checks.